Azrock really is a dark horse when it comes to motherboards, because when it comes to X870 Pro RS I covered last time, well even someone like I, whose principal hobby is complaining about everything, couldn't stop singing praises. And while that costs as little as $200, or a bit more for the Wi-Fi version, they have another quote-unquote budget offering with the X870 Riptide Wi-Fi, which costs $250. So what exactly can you expect from Aslock when you pay that bit extra? Well, obviously one of the biggest things is the overall look of it, because it looks a lot more gamery and actually reminds me a lot of motherboards from Aorus. And of course, because it comes in black, it will probably match a lot more people's PCs than the Pro RS. Then when it comes to CPU power, well here we have the exact same config of 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, rated at a maximum of 80 amps, with 2 for 8 pins as well. So that is all the same, even down to the 8 layer PCB, and also the maximum 8000 megatransfer per second memory speeds, or at least that's what they are rating it for. You can probably go a bit higher if you know how. Anyway, coming down to PC expansion here, things are also pretty much identical with one primary PC Gen 5 16x slot, another physically 16x but actually Gen 4x4 slot below that. So not the most in the world and unfortunately there's no 1x slots here either. While it still has 3 and not 2 slots, with the main one being Gen 5, the last one is now Gen 4 rather than Gen 3. And still like before, while occupying one of the M.2 slots will disable the second PCIe slot, occupying the SATA ports will no longer slow down your M.2s, which is nice. And speaking of SATA, you do have, once again, four connectors here. When it comes to the other internal connectors, here we see a very weird downgrade, seeing how we're going down to just six fan connectors from the 7 on the Pro RS, which is weird, though at least we still do have the three addressable and one not addressable RGB connectors here. Then finally, turning the thing around to look at the rear I.O., here we see, a second, nine USB Type-A ports, but the cheaper Pro RS had ten. Ah, oh, Azrock, I really do like you, but I think you gotta understand that motherboards that are more expensive are usually supposed to have more features than the cheaper ones. Those guys just make the strangest decisions ever, sometimes for the better, and sometimes for the worse. What is identical from last time, however, is the two 40 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports, which is still pretty impressive to see at this price point. Add to that HDMI, but no display port for integrated graphics, 2.5 gig Ethernet, unlike the 5 gigabit we get in some MSI models of generation, Wi-Fi 7, and also, unfortunately, just two audio jacks and optical spit if. Though hey, at least now it's running over the ALC4082 codec, though still I have a feeling I'd be able to count my fingers down of people who would care about that or be able to tell the difference, but still that's something. Meaning that overall it's a confusing package, just some really bizarre choices and omissions compared to the Pro RS and RS Wi-Fi, however, just for a couple of dollars more, you get a motherboard that looks really fantastic and it's still that overall great ASRock package, even if it does have some questionable choices. So if you want to get this yourself, then our Amazon and Newark links to it will be up in the icons and down in the video description below, where you're just going to find our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way, plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Ronyak, Bardus Roker, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Level Up. But anyway, that's not it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.